I know that all of you have experienced the drama of uh, Facebook and WhatsApp and Instagram shutting down. I didn't experience any of that because I don't use any of them. I'm so happy I deleted my Facebook account years ago. But the short version is basically like uh, someone deleted the DNS address of Facebook and all of its services. So basically, you know, people said, explain it in football terms, football, but someone took the football, you know, as I saw on Twitter. Or basically... Your address is uh, 1 Sesame Street, except someone has uh, taken the address from the front of your house. The mailman came into the street and said, well, this address doesn't exist, and threw the letters away. That's essentially what happened with Facebook. But And it came right after a whistleblower at Facebook came out and blew the whistle on a bunch of things, but there is a lot of sketchy things about that whistleblower. I mean, we've always been talking a wee while, you know, for a long time about big tech censorship, and it looks like this whistleblower is uh, someone who wants wants their censorship to increase. And um, I'm not sure about this whistleblower and all that stuff, man. Like, you know, but I'm just saying that if 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 you were in if if you were in a room with them and and the light was broken, you could you could see them in 4K. You know, uh, Mark Zuckerberg is hit back at the testimony of the Facebook whistleblower Frances Hogan, saying that her claims the company puts profit over people's safety are just not true. In a blog post, the Facebook founder and chief executive addressed one of the most damaging statements in Hogan's opening speech to US senators on Tuesday that Facebook puts astronomical profits before people. And it's like, the corporation puts profits before people. No. No, never. I, I simply cannot believe that. Whistleblower. Uh, at the heart of these accusations is the idea that we prioritise profit over safety and well-being. That's just not true, he said. He added the argument that we deliberately push content that makes people angry for profit is deeply illogical. We make money from ads and advertisers consistently tell us they don't want their ads next to harmful or angry content, which, you know, is something that does happen. Zuckerberg said uh, many of the claims made by Haugen and in the Wall Street Journal based on documents she leaked don't make any sense. The most damaging reporting in the Wall Street Journal reiterated at length by Haugen in testimony to the US Senate on Tuesday that was Facebook failed to act on an internal research showing that its Instagram app was damaging teenagers' mental health. And that is one thing, by the way, is I, I will say that social media does fuck you up. It does affect your mood, right? That's why I, I have periods where I, I take a little back step away from it, right? A lot of people are going on there and like, at least I imagine for women, they go on and compare themselves to other women and it stresses them out. You know, it's the same as like, it's the same as when I, I pick up a, a men's health magazine and I look at it and go, oh, oh yeah, I forgot that there's muscles in your stomach. But it's okay, my dick makes up for it. No, it doesn't. My dick's tiny. My dick's my dick is very, very small. Uh, many of the claims don't make any sense. If we <laughs> wanted to uh, ignore research, why would we create an industry-leading research program to understand these important issues in the first place, he said. And yes, and like like I was saying before, is see, when, you, when you've got people like lying about you all the time, he's an ass, he's a racist, he's this, he's that, he fuck it, he's done this and he's done that and just all this other nonsense, that that can get to you after a while. And one thing that I noticed in like anyone who's like a, a YouTuber or who's like an e-celeb or you know, e-celeb for lack of a better term will tell you and they've all experienced it is see when you're like going through your mentions, right? You're just sitting flicking through, you have ninety nine nice messages. You have 99 nice messages. I love your Mad Lad series. I think you're really, really funny. You're one of my favourite YouTubers and everything. And you find yourself just gliding right past those. It's just, it's weird. This person's took the time out of their day to send you a lovely comment. And your mind just, whew, just right, right past it. And then there'll be the one dickhead that goes, uh, Kyle Durkin's an arsehole. He's comedy shit. He's not funny. He's a fucking fascist. But, and all that stuff. And that's the one that you focus on. And that's when you stop and you're like, motherfucker. And that's when you get angry. And it's like, mate, you just had, and I had to tell this to myself, mate, you just had like 99 nice comments. But the one bad comment you got is like, fucked your day up. Right. And that's it's social media. There's social media. That, that's just the thing that happens. So basically, Damaging teenagers' mental health. I, I agree. Yes, I, I would absolutely agree with that. 
Responding to Haugen's claims that Facebook's attempts to limit harmful content were constantly hampered by a shortage of staff, he said, if we didn't care about fighting harmful content, then why would we employ so many more people dedicated to this than any other company in our space, even ones larger than us? If we wanted to hide our results, why would we have established an industry-leading industry leading standard for transparency and reporting on what we're doing? Haugen's testimony and accompanying statements by US senators in the hearing repeatedly questioned whether Facebook could be trusted. Facebook has not earned a right to just have blur, just to have blind trust in them, said Haugen, a former Facebook employee who worked on the company's unit monitoring electoral interference before she quit in May. Zuckerberg said a change to Facebook's newsfeed algorithm in 2018 was implemented because it increased well-being. According to Haugen, inter internal Facebook research showed that the change to newsfeed, a customised scroll of content that is a core part of Facebook users' interaction with the platform, had amplified divisive content because... The way algorithms work is they want you to stay on the site and watch all the shit that basically only the more shit you see that you are interested in, the longer you stay on the site. That's what algorithms do. That's marketing. The algorithm learns about you, your likes, your needs, your wants, your desires, and it will once it learns all that, that's what it will put in front of you because it wants you watching as much content as possible. It wants to keep keep you in front of that screen for as long as it possibly can because the longer you're sitting down, the longer you're watching adverts. That's that's just business. However, it does have a societal impact. Uh, Zuckerberg said uh, this change showed fewer viral videos and more content from friends and family, which we did knowing that it would mean people spent less time on Facebook. Uh, knowing it would mean people spent less time on Facebook, but the research uh, suggested it was the right thing for people's well-being. Is that something a company focused on profits over people would do? Addressing company staff in the Facebook post made late on Tuesday, Zuckerberg said he expected many employees would not recognise the business portrayed in the Wall Street Journal coverage and Haugen's testimony. I am sure that many of you found the recent coverage hard to read because it just doesn't reflect the company we know. We wrote, uh, he wrote, we care deeply about issues like safety, well-being and mental health. It's difficult to see coverage that misrepresents our work and our motives. At the most basic level, I think most of us just don't recognise the false picture of the company that is being painted. Zuckerberg opened the post with a reference to Monday's platform outage when the company's services, including Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp, went offline for nearly six hours. Facebook has 3.5 billion monthly active users across its platforms, including Instagram and WhatsApp. The deep, deeper concern with an outage like this isn't how many people uh, switch to competitive services or how much money we lose, but what it means for the people who rely on our services to communicate with loved ones, run their business, uh, or support their communities, he said. And then it's just the usual Guardian's e -bag. And, and basically, like, yeah, well, no point in going into it again, but, you know, I see how, like I said, that these social media websites uh, have become the new town square. It's where people converse, especially during COVID when everyone's locked down and things like this are the only way that they can communicate with each other. And that's why I say that uh, private co private companies, yeah, enforce rights, yeah, well, just the same as we tell, we force private companies to not shoot you and steal your stuff, we should also force private companies to not uh, violate your speech rights. But as far as the actual whistleblower on Facebook has went, uh, a lot of the concerns were about right-wing content, right-wing stuff, Trump content, you know, that type of thing. You anon. In fact, me just saying that, there we go, that's this video demonetized. Uh, but stuff like that, and that seemed to be the concern, and that's why a lot of people, you know, a lot of people are like, yeah, there is a problem with social media. And we, we, you know, we, we're sitting there like, yeah, there is, yeah, yeah. They censor us far too much, but the left wing are like, no, doesn't censor enough. Like, I keep seeing right wing opinions, and I'm just, I just can't believe these people think that they can speak. Can't believe the right wing thinks that they get to talk. Just, just boss my piss. Don't like those right wingers. But yeah, that that seems to be the like the primary focus. Where you know, you know, nothing about you know anti for content or anything like that. But stuff about the right wingers, which is why see this Hogan person just keep keep a close eye on them. <laughs> 